Well, hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're making a fraction calculator. Well, it wasn't that long ago on the show that I used one of these. It wasn't a feature of the show by any means, but it drew a lot of attention. And there were quite a few of you out there that uh, asked for a link to purchase this. Well, unfortunately, it's no longer in production. At least I was unable to find a link for one for sale anywhere. Um, so what I did was... I decided to make my own and that's what we're going to do today. Now it all starts off over at the bench with a little bit of layout and I'll explain what we need to do. Well what we need for this project are two circles and those circles will be the size of our fraction calculator and each one of those circles in order to make it work needs to be divided into 64 equal sections. Now. That can be a little tedious to do by hand, but I found online a spoke generator program. I'll post the link to it below in case you want to get it for yourself. And I ended up on the computer drawing myself out this circle, which is divided into 64 sections. Now you're gonna need two of these. So the very first thing that you're going to want to do is pick any one of these sections. It doesn't matter. That will be your starting point. And let's just say it's this one right here. And at this point, you want to mark zero in this square because this will be your starting point for all of your calculations and you need to know where it is. So we will mark zero. Now here's the thing, starting at the next square going counterclockwise around this circle, you now want to draw in or mark in the values all the way along, increasing the value each time by 1 64th of an inch. So starting here we have 1 64th and then 1 32nd and now just go around and do the rest of them. So this is now 3 64ths and we'll carry on all the way around the circle until we get it marked out. Now I actually made a mistake here on mine and over here at the 3.30 seconds, I got a little bit confused. I hit 3.30 seconds and then a couple more measurements and then I hit 3.30 seconds again and that caused my measurements at the end to be mixed up. But that's okay, it's in pencil, it's my rough copy. I can go around, erase them and rewrite them. So I'm gonna get that done and then what you need to do at that point is draw another circle and that radius will be approximately one quarter of an inch bigger than what this one here is. So we can draw that around and then at each one of our segments we can extend the lines of our segments here so that they reach out here. Now I'm just doing this rough. You should really use a ruler. This is just a demonstration. And once you get that done, in the middle of each one of these small little sections, we need a mark to drill a hole. Just like that. All the way around. So get that done. And the other thing that you want to do for this as well is at the zero mark, in this extension section, you want to color this in black or dark so that you have a very definitive mark there to show the zero point. And that is the bottom wheel completed. Again, you want to keep in mind that these marks, although I've drawn them roughly, they should be centered in each one of these sections. So with that done, you can put that aside now and you can concentrate on your second 64 divided sections. 
And the first thing that you want to do is just like we did on the bottom wheel, you want to choose a starting point. And we're just gonna put a little X here for now. Do not write zero. This one is a little different, but just like we did with the other section, the bottom wheel, we will start here going counterclockwise and we are going to draw in all of the fractions increasing by 1 64th each and every time we change to the next section going counterclockwise around your ring. And now with that being done, what we need to do at this point is we need some kind of handle to hold this while we're working on it. So on this side here or on the bottom here, wherever you like, just out the side, we need to place like a circular mark like this. Just something like a little thumb hold to be able to pinch onto that while you're using it. Now as well, over here, at this zero section, or where the zero section would be, this is actually going to be a cutout. So coming in here about an inch, we can draw a line here. And this will actually be cut out, but we need somewhere around the outside when we are actually using the calculator, we need a stop so that we don't go past our calculation. So stopping outside here roughly about halfway in the middle here, we're going to need a platform and we will carry that platform down here like this. So now this section here will end up being a cutout, leaving this little tab here as our stop while we're using the calculator and leaving this tab here as your handle or your holder. Now, I've given you the explanation of how to lay this out in case you want to do your own layout. You may not like what I've come up with, but what I have done is I've gone on the computer and spent a ridiculous amount of time making a PDF file for both of these patterns. We now need our material to make it out of. And for that, we're going to use some hardboard. So what I'm going to do is our lower wheel here, I am going to use spray adhesive and attach our pattern to one eight thick hardboard. Our other pattern, which is our top wheel, I have some quarter inch thick hardboard here and the same thing. I'm going to spray spray adhesive to the back of these patterns. Normally, I let it set up for three minutes to tack up to make it temporary. Um, you don't have to do that this time. You can spray it and apply it right away. So we're gonna get both of these patterns applied to our 1 8 thick hardboard and our quarter inch thick hardboard. And once we get that done, I'll see you over at the scroll saw. Well, the first thing we're gonna do is start with the larger rear wheel. That's the one with all the hole marks around the perimeter. This one's pretty simple. All we're going to do is cut around the perimeter to give us a circle, basically. And now we can turn our attention to the smaller top wheel. Now for this one here being quarter inch, I've installed a little more of an aggressive blade. Uh, I've put in a number five for this one, whereas the one eighth I used a number two. And all we're gonna do is cut around the perimeter. You wanna make sure that you're cutting in here for your, what will be your answer window. So we'll get this cut out and I'll show you what to do next.
So we now want to turn our attention to our larger wheel. And what we need to do is at each one of these marks here, where we placed a, a mark for a hole, we need to drill a 332nd diameter through hole. I will warn you, it is better to use a brad point bit for this. You get a much cleaner cut. And as well, when you're first starting into the pattern here, because this pattern will be a permanent fixture on this calculator, go slow so that it doesn't shred the paper. You want it to get a nice clean cut at each one of these holes. So I'm going to get these all drilled up and I'll come back and see you. And with all the holes drilled, you should have something that looks like that. At this point now, what you want to do is take your top piece template, lay it over top of your bigger one, and you want to look around all the perimeter and line it up so that the perimeter of your smaller disc lines up with that line that's just outside of your fractions here on the larger disc. And once you get that lined up so that you're happy with it all the way around, what we can do at that point is clamp it together so it's not going to move and we'll take it over to the drill press and we will drill right in the middle here, right through both pieces, a 532nd diameter hole. Well, you may be wondering why such a specific sized hole. And that would be because I will be using these to fasten the two discs together. And what these are, they are drive pin rivets. Um, all we need to do at this point is take our larger drive pin rivet, which would be our sleeve, we'll push it up through the bottom through our 532nd hole, just like that. We will sit our top disc on top of there. Now you want to use a, a board underneath while you're doing this because your next step is to push in this set pin and use a wackometer to drive it home. Now, you can leave it a little loose and that'll give this the ability to spin. Just like that. So now this can now spin freely in behind. And that, my friends, is your fraction calculator done. So how do you use it? Well, let me show you because this thing is really awesome. Well, in order to add any fractions, what you need to do is, for starters, reset your calculator to zero. And you'll know the zero because it's this dark spot that you have over here. So you can spin that all the way around until it reads zero in our answer window. And from there, it is as simple as choosing what fractions you want to add. So we'll just do some easy addition just to show you how it works. So let's add 1 8 and 1 8. Now we all know that 1 8 and 1 8 is 1 quarter. We don't need a calculator for that. But if you did need one, all you do is take your pencil, put it in the hole that's adjacent to the 1 8 mark, and turn it clockwise until your pencil hits the stop that we cut. And that will give you 1 8 of an inch. You want to add another eighth. You put your pencil in the hole that's adjacent to the one eighth and spin it clockwise until you hit the stop. And you can see there we have one quarter. So one eighth plus one eighth is one quarter. What if we add another quarter? Well, we all know that a quarter and a quarter is one half. So you put your pencil in the hole at one quarter, spin it around, just there it stops and we have one half in our answer window. But what if we add another half? Well, this is where you have to keep things in mind because we all know that one half plus one half equals one. So we'll put our pencil adjacent to our half inch and spin it around and we'll look and our dark spot has now come around and reached our stop. Every single time that dark spot comes around or passes that, we have to add one to our answer. So here, because it has come to the stop, one half plus one half is one inch. And that is how you do it. So how about subtracting fractions? Well, again, you have to reset this thing to zero. So let's say that we want to take away uh, five eighths minus one quarter. So you want to set it so that your 5 eighths 
is in the window. And then what you want to do now is starting from your zero point where you just had this, move it counterclockwise and stop it at the fraction that you want to subtract. So I said five eighths minus a quarter. So we'll take the five eighths, spin it counterclockwise and stop it at one quarter. And there is our answer there in the window at three eighths. Now, this is a prototype and while doing this, I have noticed that this handle gets in the way of any of the measurements here in this section. It blocks out our holes. So when you actually see this pattern, I will be revamping it so that this handle doesn't exist because unfortunately, although I thought it was a good idea when I designed it, it turns out it gets in the way. And with that handle cut off, I've now cut this thing apart. We'll just put in a new drive pin, put it back together. And uh, we should have once again, a functioning calculator. So we'll put our drive pin back in here. This is a new one and we use our wackometer. Give it a couple of taps. There we go. Just like that. And just like I said, you can do your calculations here, slide it along and it should be just fine. And it works fine. There's not enough friction here between these two because you're not driving that drive pin all the way home. Either way, there you go. A functioning fraction calculator. And uh, well, I hope you like it. And there you have it. A shop made fraction calculator. Guys, if you are someone that works in imperial measurements, this is something that you need. That's all there is to it. Um, this thing is absolutely uh, wonderful in the shop if you need to add or subtract fractions. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. And for something so simple as a couple pieces of hardboard, it really doesn't take that much to make. What if you don't have these brass drive rivets? I wouldn't bother going out and buying some. If you don't have some, you can use a nut and a bolt just the same. Just don't crank it down. That's all there is to it. It will still work. Heck, you can drive a nail through it if you want it. Something as simple as that. Drive a nail right through it, right into the wall of your shop and it's right there where you need it all the time. It's up to you. You don't have to do it exactly like I did. Now there are modifications that you can make to this for yourself. I didn't do it on mine, but let's just say that you um, would find the decimal equivalent of fractions to be useful. That is not a problem. All you need to do is make your window on your top circle a little bigger and on the bottom circle where that window would be extended, you just need to write in the decimal equivalent to each fraction. That way as it comes around and your answer is displayed in that window, you not only have the fractional value, but the decimal value as well. Now for me, it was kind of humorous to find that the handle that I thought was going to be so convenient for holding it. And I even tested this thing by making paper prototypes and that sort of thing. And it worked just fine. But I guess I never hit on those fractions that were underneath that thumb hold. So, hey, I learned something here today too, which is don't do it. Don't, don't, don't put that thumb hold on there because it gets in your way. So no problem, no big deal. And by the time this airs, I will have that removed from the pattern and have it put back to normal. Now guys, um, honestly, it took me hours to put this thing together between making the spoke template and then I actually used Cricut Design Space, believe it or not, and typed out each individual fraction and then rotated it a certain number of degrees and then put it into each section in order to make the entire pattern and then copy and paste, added another circle, oh, et cetera, et cetera. It was just a nightmare to make and it took hours, but it worked. It worked. It gave me a functional PDF that I can share with you guys. And all you have to do is drop me a line at a cut above underscore woodworking at hotmail.com. And I will be more than happy to send you a copy of this so that you can make your own. So I guess all in all, when it comes down to it, 
I guess the fact that it was uh, no longer in production or no longer available really didn't stop us from getting one, did it? <laughs> Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. I hope you enjoyed today's content. This was a lot of fun, and I know that from the number of you that inquired about getting one of these, I know that this is going to be useful, and I'm looking forward to hearing from all of you uh, to get your own pattern from this. Again, I don't want anything for it. I appreciate you guys tuning in, and it's sort of my thanks to you to give you the pattern for what I came up with for a fraction calculator. If you haven't already, guys, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Click that bell so that you don't miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. It's been a lot of fun. It's a useful one today. I honestly hope that you've enjoyed it. I hope that you're going to make it for yourself. And more importantly, guys, I hope that you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays.